What is up, Flutter devs? I'm coming to you today with a real quick exercise. Uh, if you do happen to hear explosions, if it sounds like a war zone during this exercise, that's because this is America and we are celebrating the 4th of July. So don't worry, I'm probably not being bombed or shot or exploded, but uh, you may hear some sounds in the background. Now, about a week ago, we built this thing up above me, uh, which is the text scroller. It looks kind of like the Nest home screen. We have this text that flips back and forth between two values. Now, we built that with a custom painter a week ago, and I said, hey, if anybody knows how to build that with widgets, let me know. And my buddy Simon right here, he said, Matt, use a shader mask widget. So real quick, we're going to go redo that exercise using a shader mask. Let's get into it. So back here, we have the exercise from last week, and we're just going to start by deleting all of this custom painter stuff, okay? And we're going to come back up here to where we actually use the custom paint, and we're going to delete that as soon as my keyboard responds, whenever you're ready. Thank you. All right, we're going to kill the custom paint, and we're going to come in here, and we're just going to return the container so that we can see what we're dealing with in terms of the area that we have available to us. Save that. And now our animation is gone and we're left with just a black box. So now we want to get that behavior back, get that visual back, but we want to do it using only widgets, no custom painter. So let's make that happen. Well, inside of this container, let's create a stack. And within that stack, we will have children. Now we know that we want two labels. So let's use two text widgets, one for label one and one for label two. Order doesn't really matter, but label two is going to begin above label one. So I'll put it that way in the stack. If we save that, let's also get rid of this color that we have here. Let's save that. Okay, we have our two labels. They're over on the left. That's not where we want them. Let's surround both of them with a center widget. All right center them up. Okay, now they're in the right place, but now they're black instead of white. So let's come in here to the, oops, excuse me, wrong widget. Let's come in here to the style of the text. We'll use a text style to say color is white. And the, let's say the font size just to write it down is 16, but that may be the default anyway. All right, let's save that. Okay, now our text is white and it's centered. That's great. Now we have to get them stacking on top of each other again. How are we going to do that? Well, in comes a fractional translation, which then gives us a translation property, which we can have as an offset. And uh, this is label two, so this one goes to the top. So zero on the X, but we want negative 100% on the Y. And look at that, now we have label two up there above label one. But let's go ahead and let's repeat the fractional offset for label one, because we will need to slide label one as well. So initially, sure, we're gonna start with zero, zero and keep it where it is, but then we're going to eventually move them both down. Uh, now, you may notice that already on the screen, these labels keep flipping between each other, and that's because I never deactivated the animation. So the animation is still running, but label one and label two aren't moving. They're just flipping every time the animation ends. But now we do want them to move. How are we going to do that? Well, we already have the fractional translation. So for example, label one, we're going to push it down from 0% to 100%, we're going to push label one down, and that's going to be based on the animation curve that we have from the widget workshop, which is going to transform the animation controller value. Let's save that. Mm hmm. Okay, I don't know what that glitch was about, but now it's working. 
So you'll notice that label one pushes down. Now we need to get label two pushing down. So we're gonna take this same logic right here. The only difference is that we're going to have this minus one. So we're going to paste that same animation value right there, but we're going to say minus one so that it begins above the other label. Let's save that. All right, and now we're back here to this staircasing effect. Uh, you'll recognize this from the widget workshop if you watch the widget workshop. But now we come back to this point again of how do we mask this thing? And this is where my buddy Simon's recommendation is going to come in, which is to use a shader mask. So we'll come up here. Uh, I guess we can go above the container. The container, we could probably replace that with a sized box or something. But let's wrap that with a widget. It's going to be, in this case, a shader mask. And a shader mask is going to require us to provide a shader callback, which is given a rectangle of available space. And that's because all shaders actually apply to specific rectangular regions. They can't just be generically applied. So we're going to create a linear gradient just like we did in the widget workshop. So again, if you watch that workshop, this should be, uh, you should recall us doing this. So we need to provide colors and we'll provide the same colors. We will go with white uh, with opacity of zero. Then we will go with white again, but full opacity, full opacity, and then white with an opacity of zero. This gives us transparency at the top, transparency at the bottom, and then solid white everywhere in between. We also need to say where we begin, which is alignment dot top center. And we need to end at alignment dot bottom center. We also need to provide our stops. This tells uh, Flutter where our colors are applied. And last time we said 5%, 30%, 70%, and 95%. So we have now recovered what we created gradient-wise in the widget workshop. And now we need to actually create a shader where we pass in our available space rectangle. Now let's save that. And we now have a linear gradient being applied. Now one way that we can see this being applied um, and actually, we may want to move this, well, let's see in a moment. We may want to move this below the container. But if we choose a blend mode, I believe if we go with blend mode, maybe destination, let's see what happens here. Nope, that's not what we wanted. Maybe source. There we go. So there's our gradient. That's the actual gradient that we're creating, and we, we couldn't see it previously. But once again, we want to blend our text with that gradient, uh, which actually should be happening automatically. Yeah, I think it is happening, but now here's the problem. And he here's something I wasn't able to figure out with Shader Mask. I would expect that the natural behavior of Shader Mask is to mask all the things that are not touching the shader, but that doesn't seem to be the case. It's showing us our text even when our text is outside of our shader. So here's what we can do as a workaround for now is we can wrap our Shader Mask with a Clip Rect. Save that. And now notice that we have now achieved again the visual effect that we started with. Um, and in fact, I think, now I think the text, I'm not sure if we have control with the gradient over the text opacity. Let's, instead of going 100% opaque, let's go 60% here and see if that changes anything for our text. We may have to do it with the text itself. Okay, I guess it did affect the text. So we can put any opacity we want in there and it will impact our text rendering. Uh, so this allows us to achieve the same text scroller effect, but instead of using a custom painter, we can do it all at the widget level. Now, why does it matter if you do it at the widget level? Well, the thing about widgets is that you gain things like tap targets if you need them. And of course, widgets can use any widgets you want. They can use, instead of text, you can use images, you can use images and text. So this gives us a lot more versatility than using the text painter. And for most developers, using widgets directly will make more sense anyways. So I just wanted to drop in and apply the 
suggestion that Simon made. It looks like we can achieve what we're going for here. The only confusion point that I have is why we need this clip wrecked. So if you have an answer to that, feel free to, to place it below. I could not find a blend mode that would automatically clip on our behalf. Anyways, this is using shader mask to solve the same problem from a week ago, but at the widget level. So with that said, I'm going to go back to listening to mortars, listening to uh, mortars explode here on the, on the 4th of July, and I'll catch you in the next widget workshop.